Hello, I'm Mark Anderson, American Free Press Deputy Editor. I'm often on the road for AFP writing my Across the Nation news series and analysis and commentaries under the headings The Big Picture and Probing the Media, among others. Thanks for joining me for this commentary, which I'm working on right now on one of my news assignments. Take this into account. In the midst of all the tea parties across America, is it possible that national Fox News commentator Glenn Beck is a Teocon? Well, some of us know about the neocons, or neoconservatives, a seemingly conservative faction of Republicans who embrace constant interventionist warfare, big government, massive spending, of course, and merciless ridicule of anyone who opposes their designs for an imperial America that wages war abroad and stifles dissent at home. Mr. Beck, recall, saddled up his horse, so to speak, and galloped to a major San Antonio Tea Party in the spring of 2009 when these tea parties were in their younger days of showing genuine discontent among grassroots Americans about the troubled direction in which their nation is headed. Mr. Beck was in San Antonio at that time to ride a big wave of strong citizen unrest. He appeared more or less sincere surfing that wave then. But when it comes to the three-way race for the Republican nomination for Texas governor, comprised of incumbent Rick Perry, U.S. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, and strong challenger Deborah Medina, it seems Mr. Beck wants to reverse Medina's skyrocketing candidacy, which went from some 4% in some polls to a sudden 24% or higher. Indeed, other polls taken right after two televised debates in Texas showed Medina matching and even surpassing both Perry and Hutchison. At one point, Medina was around 70% or higher, while the other two barely hit double digits. Well, this threat to the GOP inside establishment in the biggest state of the lower 48 must be getting scary for these insiders. And then along comes Mr. Beck with his radio interview of Deborah Medina. Beck's recent antics in interviewing Texas Republican gubernatorial candidate Deborah Medina around February 11 indicate that juvenile entertainment trumps professionalism for Mr. Beck, who snared Medina with a hit piece by asking her if she is a 9-11 truther during a radio interview that started out with more or less normal questions about her background and state issues. But the question is not really 9-11 beliefs, especially regarding a state candidate, someone like Medina running for governor, uh, and Mr. Beck's approach was uh, like a journalist stifling dissent, like a censor, rather than exploring any issue, be it 9-11 or anything else, like an investigative journalist with a reasonably open mind. These things are just too steep for Mr. Beck to even handle. Not only does Mr. Beck avoid asking tough questions about 9-11, he, he said the following just as soon as Medina hung up the phone right after his interview with her, and this is what Mr. Beck said on the air, I, I think I can write her off the list. Let me take another look at Kay Bailey Hutchison if I have to, he said. Ha, ha, ha. And then he's talking about Rick Perry as if he knows him rather intimately. Rick, I think you and I could French kiss right now after this, Mr. Beck said. He's a damn handsome man, Beck added about Mr. Perry. And he was interplaying with his co-host, Beck's co-host, uh, who said, that Governor Perry looks good in a pair of jeans. Such professionalism. And then Mr. Beck concluded in these after-interview remarks, wow, the fastest way back to 4%, meaning that Medina's poll ratings would go right back down to 4% where they started before her popularity skyrocketed. But at least John David Wells of Talk Radio 570 KLIF in the Dallas area did some actual professional work after Beck's hit piece on Medina, sorting the matter out rather fairly by establishing that Medina believes Americans need to question their government about all important matters, including 9-11, even though based on her current understanding, Medina accepts the, the government's 9-11 story. But that does not mean everyone accepts the 9-11 story of the government, and Beck craftily used this issue, however, to beat up on Medina and on what he calls 9-11 truthers, all at the same time, all in one broad brushstroke. Putting aside Medina's candidacy for a moment, consider the following. Changing the important word truth to a non-word, truther, my, my Microsoft Word program on my computer here underlines it in red, meaning that is not a word. 
and using that as a pejorative or put down, it, it, that looks like something right out of some sort of propaganda handbook. Whether you're looking into 9-11 or any other subject where truth is being sought, and those concerned about where and under what circumstances President Obama was born are called birthers, which also is not even a word, but the same propaganda value is evident. And it's really unfortunate that Mr. Beck would even position himself to be any kind of a professional journalist, despite the entertainment value that he cites when using tactics and antics and uh, sloppy language like this. So with Glenn Beck, like much of the corporate media, we have ridicule, censorship of dissent, and the bastardization of the English language replacing professionalism, free inquiry, and clear, unadulterated language that Americans at this troubling time can understand in their quest for answers to the problems in this nation, not the sustaining of the problems and hiding answers and stifling free inquiry. In American free press, so-called underdog candidates are recognized, at least for the reason that the establishment candidates have had their day in the sun and they have failed America. We did an article recently about Rand Paul uh, aiming for the US Senate. Yes, he's Ron Paul's son, but even if he wasn't, he's an underdog Republican and those that are not these so-called underdogs and the media decides who the underdogs are and aren't, these uh, so-called underdogs deserve a fair chance to be treated like anyone else and as Deborah Medina said, she expects people to ask hard questions of her now and if and when she becomes the governor of Texas. And if she does, there's no doubt that the North American Union, especially that part of it that calls for the Trans-Texas Corridor, NAFTA Superhighway, the tolling of freeways and other uh, very, very big issues, that could come under uh, a lot of, um, a lot, uh, she could pose, in other words, she could pose a very big threat to that whole NI NAU project, the whole North American Union. So, this may be why Mr. Beck, through his own initiative, or maybe put up by someone else, they say he's uh, more than a passing friendship with Governor Perry, that's an allegation, but for whatever reason, it seems that Deborah Medina might be doing a little too well for somebody's taste. American Free Press, you can check it out at AmericanFreePress.net, we'll do a much fairer job, we'll see what happens. Texas early vo voting is happening right now as we speak, getting into the middle part and latter part of February, and the primary is March 2nd. We'll see who wins the GOP gubernatorial nomination. Some food for thought for this time, and we'll see, we'll see what happens in the near future. Stay tuned here on AFP.net, AmericanFreePress.net, and our hard copy version called 888-699-NEWS to check it out. And I appreciate you listening to this commentary. We'll see you next time online.